uh, dear friends and colleagues and uh, brothers and sisters, I greet all of you with the greeting that you like. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whenever you are. I apologize for this uh, 14 minutes delay because of the internet connection. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Today we're going to talk about a very important topic, which practical topic, which my uh, journey or my uh, trip to field office uh, last week, which is called the Gloria COVID-19 and the humanitarian work. While we are uh, remembering uh, some of the difficult time that we are going through during COVID, we need to all the time, all the time focus on what we need to do and make a change. Uh, if you want to follow on Facebook, it's there. If you want to follow on the Zoom, the link of the Zoom is on my Facebook page. If you, because there's a lot of slides and you need to see all the images. We planned this journey to Kenya a month ago to take with us 14 young people from Britain, from Ireland, from Spain, and from Italy to connect with the field workers in Kenya, not only the field workers, but also the right holders. Right holders is the name instead of calling them beneficiaries, we call them rights holders. In this image, which you can see on the Zoom, so we're following on Zoom, is the local community receiving us and dressing us in their local costumes. The index of today's talk is five parts, introduction, overview of the field visit, uh, cities that were placed and were visited in Kenya, workshop and the activities, and my message to the young people. Kenya field visit was from 23rd of uh, January to 31st of January. We stayed eight days and we traveled back on the day 9th. We visited five cities. We got about 18 participants, including some field workers. Average work is about 17 to 18 hours every day. And uh, we visited five sites. Days, we visited the sites five days. And workshop was in two days. Names of cities that we visited, Nairobi three days, Wajir one day, Garishi uh, one day, and Garissa one day, and Kalifi two days, and this about eight days, five cities. We are still surrounded by COVID pandemic, which is still quadriplegic, affecting us with quadriplegia. Quadriplegia in medical terminology is complete paralysis in the hands and the arms and legs. And this is since uh, April, March, April 2020 till about September, October 2021. We all have this quadriplegic behavior at the time. It delayed many benefits. It leads to the closure of institutions, companies, factories, governmental institutions, schools, universities, uh, stop transportation, terminate transportation, post transportation. However, 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 the rolling wheel of this world did not pause. And while everything, we made everything around us to, and we made our own life to stop, but the life surrounding us did not pause or not stop. Let me ask a stupid question, which have been raised by one of my colleagues. Is COVID reality or fantasy, or a dream, or illusion, deception or existence? This question keep, come, keep comes back, keeps coming back, keeps coming back, keeps coming back. 
many interpretation, many explanation, many theories. But we have to keep asking it. The right answer will be given to us by the specialist, not by myself, because I'm not interested nowadays, because I need to, for, to carry on delivering my message. And by the people who might think that we have been deceived by politicians, by economists, by others over the last two, day, two, two years. And the great work has been done by people to try to save lives of others. So this question, I will leave it to time to answer it. What is the link between the title? You know, the title, Gloria, Humanitarian Work, and COVID. Gloria is one of our young, uh, uh, young uh, woman working for us in Kenya. She's Kenyan. COVID, we know COVID. We don't want to talk about it anymore. Humanitarian work. Let me take you around with me to explain to you the importance of the humanitarian work or social work. It's exactly as important as these four, actually, uh, activities or functions or jobs being done in our sites. Number one is exactly equivalent to the emergency response ambulances, ambulance services, saving life of people. It's number one. Number two, firefighters, which we call them uh, the fire brigade, saving people life. Number three, police and security who are protecting community and individuals from criminals and from crimes. Number four, armed forces and army who are protecting the whole country. So humanitarian work is not less than any of the four of them. And this is a value which I'm stressing for each and every one of us to understand the value of humanitarian work the value of humanitarian work is not media, it's not publicity, it's not handout. It's equivalent to these services provided to us by these four functions. Okay. Whereas COVID that we spoke about previously and it became now, became compulsory upon us to work during COVID. I have to take the precautionary measures of to stand up for the people in need, the rights holders. But we cannot afford, we cannot afford, and we cannot afford to sit down and do nothing. Or to sit down in our offices and give order and behave like bosses, not like leaders. Many people in the humanitarian organization are behaving like bosses, ordering people where they are having their coffee and tea and their tea in Starbucks or Nero. What is the reason behind doing this lecture? The reason came where we were during our journey, our trip in Kenya with about 18 young people from the field as well as from Europe. I heard in the discussion with the field workers that they were closing the offices for two months, maybe in the month of March, April. But they had a meeting, a Zoom meeting, said, let us decide how can we reopen. This was 2020, 2020, not 2021. Let us have a discussion how, how, maintain, how can we maintain our headquarter in Nairobi open. Then let us how to put a plan that we should be visiting the rice holders, delivering what they need from us. And they made the decision to open the headquarter, which is Nairobi, the head office, in April. Then they started to go and deliver what people need in this different areas. In one of the discussion, Gloria, uh, Abdurashid, 
and Yusuf and Jammu were talking to one another. Said the reopening of offices, organizing the presence of employees, and ensure the following government rules. Yeah, and you have to open the offices. The decision taken by the executive committee and ensure that we are following the government rules and the international rules. Recalling all the rights holders, reaching all the rights holders from the needy, orphans, widows, poor people. The, 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 the field workers themselves had the desire to come out to risk their life to reach the people who need to be served. So, as we were talking with, with our, uh, as we were talking to one another, Gloria mentioned on one day during Ramadan, she was fasting, but she was not Muslim. She is not Muslim, but she was sharing with us the spirit of Ramadan. She started her journey at five o'clock in the morning and she reached the place at eight o'clock in the evening. Then Abdul Rashid and Yusuf and Jamu said, sometimes some of us took them 48 hours to reach the rights holders, to reach the widows and the orphans and the others. This is, was the spirit. This was the spirit of the people in Kenya. This was the spirit of the field workers. This is a spirit, the spirit of the people who are on the ground that we are making ourselves bossy on them while during this period april march or april may 2020 i'm talking about 2020 up till now there's still some chairman some senior directors some ceos did not go to their offices in the red rooster and europe in America, in the Middle East, in Canada, and other places. And they're still thinking whether they can open the offices or not. While we are still thinking here, Gloria, Abdul Rashid, Jamu, uh, and Yusuf were on the ground to reach the rights holders, the people who pay our salaries in the field. They are the orphans, the widows, and the destitute, the displaced, uh, disenfranchised communities. This is where I want you to put yourself in this image. Are we really humanitarian worker? Because when we ask for something and behave like a boss, not like a leader, we won the photograph yesterday while I'm sitting in London, or New York, or in Paris, or in Rome, or in Riyadh, or in Kuwait, or in Doha. I want the photograph today. I want the data today. I want the information today. But I'm not in the office. I'm sitting at home. This is the difference between the humanitarian spirit of the field workers and the humanitarian spirit of the bosses bossing us. The program which you made for this 14, 16 young, uh, young men and women from Europe, it is for one objective, and I keep saying it all the time till I die, inshallah. It's building future generation building future generation, building future generation. That's why we designed the program around this topic. To understand the following, what the needs of the communities to undertake it and accomplish the needs. This is first point. Second point, building the horizons of generations that will create and manage the life journey of others. You young people, you have to understand 
how can you build the horizons of the life of others that you can manage and direct for them? Number three, regulating and organizing social path that can weave the societal infrastructure. You have a very heavy task, very challenging time. Number four, framing the civilizational and renaissance's philosophies to let others benefit of the values of their culture and morality of their citizens. This is you to bring your culture, morality, and let people to benefit from this. Drawing new landmarks to build the history of the future. You young people have to do that. Drawing new landmarks to build the history of the future of the people and their nations. You have to build the history of the future of nations that you're going to serve. Number six, building peace, structuring peace and security, spreading justice and equality and goodness, supporting the giving and benefit and beliefs, enlightening sight and insight in, and insight in secret and public, purification of secrets with knowledge, evidence and proof, and satisfaction with what the Lord granted us. All this to be framed inside the program of building future generation. So the journey's objective was trying to put a milestone in how to build the future generation. The idea and the route to the program. There's another idea for the program itself. It came, it is came through knowledge and becoming knowledgeable. But not just to read the knowledge, but you become knowledgeable. You become knowledgeable. Experience and experimenting. Communication and not discrimination. Building partnership, not fragmentation. Cohesion and unity, not introversion and humiliation. This is the idea of how to build the program. This is the route to our idea of building the future generations. To have the lead, our future generation must have the lead based on knowledge and consciousness, patience and protection, wisdom and prevention, experience and attention, awareness and consideration, tolerance and nurturing for the generations of goodness and carefulness. This is the idea of how to build the future generation. The practical program for this uh, journey or this trip it started with four people from Britain, two from Ireland, three from Italy, five from Spain, and four from Nairobi. In addition to workers in different offices who helped in the success of this operation, uh, operational field journey. This program lasted eight days, 192 hours, 11,520 minutes. The average work on these eight days was 17 to 18 hours, bringing the total number of hours to 18 participants in eight days to become 3,456 hours. And for the for all oh, for the whole group, for the whole group, the 18 is uh, 207,360 minutes. This is a, a lifetime for someone or some creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
How much this good program will cost? If we calculate that the average daily cost could be hundred dollar, this is this the non-calculated non cost. The average daily cost is about hundred dollar, so it will be roughly fourteen thousand four hundred dollars. This is beside the tangible cost, which actually came as cash from the uh, Department of Accountancy, which include tickets, cost of tickets, accommodation, transportation, food, communication, and others. So here, young men and young women, cost of journeys or trips like this or visit like this is not only cash cost it is the cost of the time of the individual the cost of the effort of the individual the cost of the thoughts of the individual the cost of the interaction of the individual the cost of the planning of the individuals the cost of the designing processes of the individuals as 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 more and more and more and more it's not only the cash that we pay from our bank account to the tangible things like air tickets or transportation or food or accommodation or so this could double or treble the actual cost What the premium addition that we have in this journey is that we ended it by having two days workshop. Quite often people go to visit the sites in the field to see people, to see the rights holders, to see the suffering, but they don't care about having to learn some additional experience from professional people in the field. But we have to make a workshop on day seven and day eight. which we introduced to the young people the following, developmental work and its programs, the value of field work, and the reality of the challenges faced by workers and poor communities, the values provided by the local workers to the main offices, to the headquarters, the sacrifices made by the local workers, available opportunities, and active partners in the local community. Hardship of life of the local workers and the members of the poor community. Local competencies of the people in the field and the capabilities that might not be available in the headquarters of these organizations. Quite a lot of people in the field are more competent more competent than people in London, Paris, Kuwait, uh, Germany, all. But because they are in this poor poverty stricken area, we boss them. Hosting guests as well. So these are the seven or eight points that was the objective for having this workshop the two days workshop after six days or five, six days of field uh, visits to different cities. The new and old in discussion. What is the new and old in discussion? Something called the closed mobile vehicle discussion. Discussion in closed mobile vehicle. What do you mean? We were on the plane. For nearly 10 hours, 15 people who started the discussion. Going around from row to row to discuss with young girls and young men about our intention, what we're going to do, the expectation, and, 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 and. This is mobile, this is discussion in closed mobile vehicles, which is in the, inside the plane inside the car, inside the coach, inside a vehicle, inside the train, 
you have to utilize our time. Why? Because I mentioned earlier that the actual cost is not only the cash coming from the bank account of the organization, but the effort that we're spending collectively together, which could double the amount of uh, value of the cash, which were actually cashing it from the bank account. This is the closed mobile vehicle. Discussion in bedrooms, which you call it, yes. If we are three or four people in a bedroom, in Spain last year, we were in dormitory. Having four beds or six beds in a room. If there's six people in this room and they're sleeping, before they go to bed, they have to keep discussing and reviewing what they've been doing, even after they wake up in the morning. Evening discussion before you go to bed, before you go to your bedrooms, review, or what you call it, reflection. This will let us to come up with new opinions, ideas. You know, in the plane, from Heathrow Airport to Jomo Kenyatta Airport, airport in, in Nairobi, we discovered the idea of writing a book, or we raised, or we talked about the idea of writing a book called Challenge the Challenges, where inside the plane from Heathrow or from London to Nairobi to utilize every second of the journey. Some sites who visit like uh, Garashi district in Khalifi, yani, we visited integrated resilience, building project involving water supply development, irrigation for food production, income generation and capacity building for women and fish farms. This is some of the sites and the projects that we visited. Also, another place called Garissa Schools in Denley, Yasrib School, Orphans in Garissa Town, Vocational Training Center in Garissa, as well as Garissa Hospital. Uh, this is an image uh, when we arrived in, when we arrived after 10 hours flight nearly from Heathrow to Nairobi, from London to Nairobi. And we went, by the time we arrived to our bedrooms, in these flats, not uh, not in a hotel. It was nearly one, two o'clock in the morning, and we have to wake up to catch another fly, a plane at half past five in the morning. I have to be in Wilson Airport before half past five in the morning. So people amongst us slept for one hour only in 48 hours. These are some of the images of the young people in different places with the with the rights holders in the different projects. And this is Wajir, Kenya. And this is Garachi district. And this is a banana. I'll send you the link later on of the presentation and the, of the talk and the fish that we get from the fish farm the school of deaf and mute people. This is a program which uh, Islamic Khalif made uh, for the workshop, two days workshop, it was very attractive and very comprehensive. And this is my last, because I didn't want to make it very long for you. And this is my last message for the young people. What's my message for you young people? I have reviewed with you the journey of eight days, 192 hours, 11,520 minutes for each individual. If you multiply them by 18, it will become 3,456 hours or 207,360 minutes. Umr, it's the life journey of someone. In addition, somebody else, it's not only the 18 people who came with us in the journey, no, inside the kitchen, no, 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 no. Some other people came from Majir, from Garishi, from Garissa, and all. 
What we want to talk to you about is that we did not go to Kenya, to the field offices there, to watch as a tourism, or to be touring as a tourism, or as a tourist, to hear and talk. No, no, no. We didn't go there just to keep taking some photographs, PR, watching, talking, or oh, feeling pity for others. No, no, no. On the contrary, it was a journey of participation for learning. The experience of foresight. The discussion for reflection. The questioning of reasoning. And the debate of empowerment. When you go to this area, young men and young women, you have to listen to the agony of the rights holders by your heart, by your mind, by your soul, not by your eyes. You have to let the images of the photograph that you take or the video that you take speaks out the agony of these people, the rights holders. It was not a tourism. It was not a journey of feeling pity for others. No, it was a journey of feeling the agony of others and reflecting the agony in action. We wanted to show you, young people, what? The value of the local field work. This is number one. The value of the local field. There's no humanitarian work without field work. No humanitarian work from European capital, Middle Eastern capitals, or American capitals, or Canadian capitals. No. It's from the field work. It's number one. The value of the local workers. Some of them are highly qualified, more committed and dedicated and spirited than most of us here in Europe, Canada, and America and Middle East. The value of the real rights holders, which we call, used to be calling them beneficiaries. Ah, it's very demeaning, insulting world. How on earth you call the one who provides you with your salary and your income as a beneficiary is the rights holder and the provider to you with your money for your salary. It's number three. The value of humanitarian and social work carried by whom? Not by London, Paris and Rome, New York and New Jersey and Washington, but by the people there, the action, the work, the actual work there, civil society there should be empowered and promoted. The value of the mission and the ethics of the humanitarian and social work. Our humanitarian and social work as a mission and that ethics and that values and as culture comes from there, not from books that we cut and paste and to make nice talks, which means nothing. Nice, hollow, meaningless talks. As I mentioned earlier on, when I started, Gloria, Abdul Rashid, Yusuf, Jamu were working in May, June, April, May, June 2020 in the field while we were sitting behind our closed doors, not in the offices, but at home. Now, this is what I mentioned earlier on to you, young people. That some other humanitarian standard, social standard, Principles and ethics, these also values that you have to understand in this talk. 
as well as the exchange of experiences between the local field workers on one hand and your experience coming from Europe and America and Canada on another hand. Because they have an experience you don't have, and they have experience that you don't have. In media, financial resources, development, public relations, and, and, and also the value of a triangular relationship, triangular, yani, tripartite or triangular. What is this triangular relationship or partnership? One, the donor and the main office. Two, the local field offices. Three, the rights holders. The rights holders the owners of the organization. You have donors and headquarters as one partner, field workers as another partner, the rights holder is the third partner. Through this equal triangular partnership, we will achieve the objective of what? Of the World Humanitarian Summit, which was held in Istanbul 2016, when the three of the three partners will have equal footage, equal rights, despite that we should give more rights to the rights holders, which are the poor and the, the needy, the orphans and the sick and the elderly and displaced and refugees and others. World Humanitarian Summit, which was held in Istanbul 2016, which includes Participation of everyone, localization, leaving no one behind, leaving no one behind. Investing in institution building, association initiatives, and building the local humanitarian competencies, localization. Achieving other goals of World Humanitarian Summit, such as the grand bargain where we should give more money directly to the local organization, not to the international organization. In addition to that, to humanitarian standard, we mentioned about it, we talked about it, standards and principles of good governance, brilliant millennium and, the, and sustainable development goal. Brilliant development goal and sustainable. All this I mentioned to you, which is very important to know, for becoming a field worker or humanitarian worker. Young people, get used not to waste any minute or a second. And let me take you to one example. People sometimes not only waste time, time, but waste food and money leave half of the plate filled, and they call themselves humanitarian workers, humanitarian workers. Well, you see, young children from Syria and Yemen are dying, or Afghanistan are dying, are going to the rubbish, going to the slum to pick up anything, anything to eat, you should be ashamed of yourself of leaving half of your cup or leaving half of a, 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 piece of, a piece of bread or half of your plate. It's absolutely haram and forbidden. And you cannot call yourself a humanitarian worker. Young people, Waste no minute, no second. As one of the most important meeting we organized with the young people during this journey was the closed the mobile vehicle discussion in the plane, as I mentioned earlier on. The journey between London and Nairobi. What do you mean by closed mobile? vehicle discussion. It's the plane, the train, the buses we use. If we are traveling in a group, 
by one of these vehicles, we should benefit and take the advantage of this closed mobile space atmosphere and plan discussions in which the travelers has no option other than participating in the discussion. Every minute inside this, every minute inside this, Abdurashid Yusuf from Kenya, uh, everyone welcome brother Abdurashid, welcome brother Ashraf uh, and others, inshallah. Every minute in the vehicle or in the plane is expensive. What are those closed mobile vehicles? I mentioned them, the train, the buses, and others. One of the benefits of these discussions was the birth of the idea of the book, where it was on the plane in the journey between London and Nairobi. And this book should be written by the young men and women on the journey, including the field workers. What about the stable closed spaces like bedrooms, dormitories? We do the same. Don't go to sleep before discussing with your colleagues your findings, whether before you go to sleep or when you wake up. Time is extremely expensive. You know, it's the, the cost of every of any journey is not only what come out from the bank account or from the accounting department, but it is the effort and the time of people spending on this journey, which can double or triple or quadruple the cost of the journey. Dear young people, we must realize and understand that the humanitarian work is not a job. It's not a job. It's not a job restricted by working hours, salaries, or contract clauses. No. Humanitarian work is a message and the value, mission and performance, activation and production, love and giving, sacrifices and survival, effort and generosity, feelings and modesty, building and development, future and survival, justice and fr fr fraternity, land and the sky, shadow and purity, brotherhood, loyalty, empowerment, and revivalism. This is the humanitarian work. I'll say it again for people who are trying to join the humanitarian work, particularly to the field worker, which I take my hat off for them. I bow down for them. Material work is a message and value, mission and performance, activation and production, love and giving, sacrifice and survival, effort and generosity, feelings and modesty, building and development, future and survival, justice and fraternity, land and the sky, shadow and purity, brotherhood, loyalty, empowerment, and revival. I forgot to mention at the very beginning of the speech, of my, my, my interaction with you, how is the condition of Ryan, the young boy in Morocco? Is he out or still in this deep well? Unfortunately, this is the responsibility of the local municipality. How can they leave a well which is uncovered? They have to be tried by the government be accountable for the, for the suffering of the whole people affected by the, young, uh, the agony of young man. I forgot to tell you, uh, young people also, the 12 young Syrian are being pushed back from the border in or the border of, of Greece, and 12 of them died frozen. Frozen. Frozen men, women, and children. And more died in the camps inside Syria 
inside Jordan, inside Lebanon. The dying, the daily dying young children and women in Yemen, 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 the origin of the Arabic language and the land of wisdom, fiqh, and the iman. And the uncles, the uncles of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because he married from this area. Remember that, remember that Arabs and Muslims. The woman, the widow, who put her six children in the middle of the market in Afghanistan for sale. Slavery is coming back only to the Muslims. Because the women, the widows, even the fathers cannot sustain the life of the livelihood, the life of their children. Children for sale in Afghanistan. If you want the blonde, if you want the one with ginger hair, if you want the dark, we have it for you. Astaghfirullah azim. And we keep wasting our time and our money, spending them on horses, cars, houses, food that we throw half of it, unfortunately, in the dustbin. Let me remind you of all of them, the concentration camps inside China to the Uyghur people. We don't know how many are there. The separation of families in China, Muslim families, where they take the male to the concentration camps and leave the female and the young children. And even they put in their dormitory non-Muslim to live with there. What's happening to humanity? Humanity needs a human being to manage it. Humanity needs a human being to understand the agony and suffering. Humanity needs people who can stand up for the rights of people. And now humanity needs each and every one of you. Does not need sectarianism, politics, See, and people trying to hypothesize things, it needs people to take, to act and take action and make the difference. People in Kashmir, nobody knows about them. Nobody knows a big concentration camp, the whole province. People in Gaza, people in Palestine, people everywhere in Democratic Republic of Congo, in Central African Republic, in Sub-Saharan Africa, in Latin America, call it, call it. Humanity need human being. Are we human being? Are we the custodian that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us to earth to save humanity? This is what you need to ask yourself, or I ask myself. There's more frozen children dying every day. We can see them. You know, the biggest joke that we have seen it over the last few days is the Palestinian inside the refugee camps are donating, raising funds to the Syrian in displacement and in refugee camp. What a shame on humanity, on the refugees, on a refugee trying to save a refugee, on a poor trying to save a poor, on a displaced trying to save a displaced. When those people standing up for the rights of the rights holder and the people who had the authority and the power are watching football, are enjoying themselves, are traveling here and there and wasting millions and millions and millions of dollars on parties, on useless conferences, on others. 
May Allah bless you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Keep going. Keep acting. Keep thanking Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you the wisdom to understand, to comprehend, then you deliver. Don't stop. And you'll see how much reward you'll have for your life in this life and for your life in the life to come. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.